This is an OLED display, and they can display cool things such as images, animations, or what layer is currently active. I've shared a few of my boards with them, and in doing so, I've gotten many questions on how they are used. I'm not going to go in detail on how to actually code, but I hope to show you the basics so that you can modify these examples to your use case. This video also assumes you have a basic knowledge of how QMK firmware works and is compiled on a local install. So let's get into it. OLED displays typically require four wires and work on a protocol known as I2C. The way this is wired up on our Arduino Pro Micro is by connecting SDA to pin 2, SDK or SCL to pin 3, ground to any ground pin, and VCC to any VCC pin. Just keep in mind that when using one, you lose two pins that could have otherwise been used for matrix definitions. Having said that, we can start looking at some code. The first thing we need to do is add a single line to our rules.mk in order to enable the OLED. The other thing we should add is link time optimization, or LTO, which should help save memory but will slightly increase compilation time. These displays come in two main size variants and it's important to note which you are using. If you are using just a 128 by 32, you don't need to change anything. However, if you are using a 128 by 64 like me, you will need to go into config.h and tell it what size to use. If you don't set this up properly, things will look stretched in the display since QMK uses the smaller size by default. After we are configured to use the OLED, we can hop into keymap.c and start adding stuff to make it work. All the code for the display belongs in a conditional check that is added below the keymap. We can then add a basic function to write to the display called OLED task user. This function returns a boolean, so right before the closing bracket, you should return false. One other thing to take note of at this point is the physical orientation of the display. If you need to rotate it, you can use a function called OLED Rotation T. This simply returns the orientation you want your display to be in. We can now move on to making the display actually do things. We're going to start very simple by just getting some text to display. All you need to do for this is set your cursor position with OLED Set Cursor, and then simply use OLED Write with the text you want. After that, you could flash your firmware and you should have some text displayed. This is cool, but obviously we could do some stuff that is a lot more useful. In my opinion, one of the most useful things an OLED display can do is show you the current app active layer or if caps lock is on. Luckily, this is super simple, but we need to modify a bit more. First, we need to use an enum to assign names to our layers. All this does is simply match the layer number defined in the key map to an easily identifiable name. Remember that things in code typically start with zero, so the first element of this enum would be the first layer in our key map. We can now check for which is active with code. We're going to go inside of OLED task user and add a switch statement that will check the return of get highest layer. This simply returns the name of your layer as defined in your enum. We then create cases for each layer and using the knowledge from earlier, write text to a certain cursor position. That's simple enough, right? Well, what if you want to display the caps lock status? That too is super simple and just requires a variable and ternary operation. We first need to store the LED state, which is where QMK stores stuff such as caps lock or num lock status. Then we can set our cursor and use a new function called OLED write P with our ternary operation. The way this works is that depending on if caps lock is true or false, it will display one or the other print string functions. So now you should be able to show your layers or current caps lock status, but these displays can get a lot cooler. So let's move on to images. Images are where OLEDs start to lose their practical uses, but gain what I like to call cool factor. This part is more complex than the previous two, but I'm going to try my best to describe it as simply as possible. Getting an image to display the way you want may require a bit of trial and error, especially if trying to get it to work with text. What I like to do for my images is create them inside of Photoshop first. It's also important to note that these should just be black and white. Since I'm working with a 128 by 64 OLED, I'm going to create my document as that with a black background. It's also important to note that this image should match the orientation that your display is using. Then I'm simply going to make something basic, but feel free to import images or make whatever you want. Now that my image is ready, I'm going to export it as a JPEG and then go to a tool called Image to C++. We need to convert our image into a byte array so QMK understands how to use it. First, select your image and change the background to black. Next, set the output to plain bytes, draw mode to vertical, and click generate. At this point, all we have to do is create a variable to store our image, paste the byte array we just generated, and tell QMK to draw it. We're going to use a function called OLED write raw p and another function called size of. The size of function is important as QMK needs to know how large the image is. After all that is added, you should be able to flash the firmware and have an image displayed. Now it's time to move on to the most complicated, but by far the coolest part of OLED displays, animations. Animations aren't super complicated in theory, but they do require more planning along with a lot more trial and error. Depending on the controller you're using, it's very likely you'll encounter memory limitations. A good rule of thumb that I've found is to try to keep animations roughly 7 frames long at the maximum, which should be long enough for most loops. Typically we convert a GIF, but can also just have multiple images flash across the display too. If using a GIF, we need to convert it into individual frames first with a tool called EasyGIF. We simply upload it, and if the dimensions are larger than our display, it's important to 
to resize to match. After that, we can click the split button, set the output as JPEG, and download the zip archive. Now at this point, we could return to the same image to CPP site from earlier and select the images we want to use in our animation. Everything else should be the same. However, this time we want to set our output to Arduino code. By doing so, it'll make it much easier to copy and modify. What we have to do now is get that into QMK, and luckily, image to CPP does most of the work for us. The first thing we must do is create a function called render animation. Then we can paste the generated code and remove all references to unsigned as well as changing anything with progmem to static. Finally, we must add a secondary array that contains the size of each frame. We're now ready to start using the animation, but let's quickly pause and talk for a second. Most tutorials will teach you a method where all the frames are added to a single array. The issue with this is that if a frame in your animation happens to repeat, you'll be duplicating that data. The code that is generated for us uses an array of something called pointers. The simplest explanation for this is that each frame is stored in its own variable, and then we define an animation in an array where we point to each one. By doing this, we save memory on duplicate frames as we don't need to redefine the data. You will, however, have to manually remove these duplicate frames and update the animation accordingly, but that's a bit outside of the scope of this video. It may also not even be needed depending on the animation you choose. For now, we're just gonna continue using whatever was generated as I don't wanna make this more confusing than it probably is. The next thing we have to do is actually set up the render animation function, but first we must add a few definitions and variables that are pretty self-explanatory. We now add the code that powers the animation. The way this works is that when a keyboard boots up, a timer is started. We simply check at predetermined intervals its status. If it happens to be longer than the frame duration we chose, we increment the frame. After adding this, we can call the render animation function from within OLED task user. If everything was done correctly, you should be able to flash the firmware and have an animation display. So that's how you set up an OLED display in QMK and configure it to do some of the most common things. This was just a basic rundown, but if you want to dive deeper into everything available, I recommend checking out the official QMK documentation. I'll also have in the description of this video the code shown for comparison, or if you just want to copy and modify it. That being said, hopefully this helped you enough to give the video a like, and if it really helped you, maybe subscribe too. I plan on doing more QMK tutorials and would love to hear what you would like to see next. Anyway, I'll see you next time.